But after the first day of airstrikes in Syria, U.S. President Barack Obama met with his Arab partners and thanked them for their commitment to fighting Islamic State. Meanwhile, a previously reluctant Turkey has said they could lend military or logistical support to U.S.-led airstrikes. Sarah Sayi has this and the rest of today's news. U.S. President Barack Obama met with leaders from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Bahrain, Qatar and the United Arab Emirates in New York yesterday with the intention to continue building support for the coalition fighting the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. Because of the almost unprecedented effort of this coalition, I think we now have an opportunity to send a very clear message that the world is united, that uh, all of us uh, are committed to making sure that we degrade and ultimately destroy uh, not only ISIL, but also uh, the kinds of uh, extremist ideologies that would lead to so much bloodshed. Uh, this is not going to be something that is quick, and it's not something that is going to be easy. Uh, it will take time. Earlier in the day, Obama vowed to continue the fight against Islamic State fighters following the first UN-led airstrikes targeting the group in Syria and pledged to build even more international support for the effort. Obama said the strength of the coalition now at more than 40 countries, including five Arab states that took part in yesterday's air campaign, shows the fight against the Islamic State is not America's alone. <laughs> Australian police today announced that they shot dead a teenager after he stabbed two counter-terrorism officers days after sweeping raids involving hundreds of police prevented what they said was an imminent plot to behead a member of the public. The 18-year-old, who had his passport suspended a week ago, was asked to attend a police station in the southern state of Victoria yesterday night because of behaviour that was causing concern. This was a planned and agreed meeting that was to occur at the Endeavour Hills Police Station. When these two police officers approached him, they were stabbed, one very seriously. Police said the man had been displaying a flag linked to the Islamic State group at a local shopping mall and had been of interest to police for months. Local media reported that he had been shouting insults about Prime Minister Tony Abbott and the government before he was shot. Yemen's president said the violence in his country is caused by a foreign conspiracy and called on Houthi rebels to drop their arms and follow through with their peace agreement. Meanwhile, Abdul Malik El Houthi's televised speech, his first since Sunday's capture of large parts of Sena, underscored the dramatic power shift towards the rebels, assailed by government forces for over a decade, but now guarding key sites in the capital unopposed. Hadi on Sunday signed a power-sharing agreement with the Houthis after they pushed deep into the capital in a fight which killed about 200 people and left them in control of the central bank and several military bases. The United Nations Summit on Climate Change have agreed to widen the use of renewable energies and raise billions of dollars in aid for developing countries in an effort to increase the prospects for a wide-ranging deal to slow global warming. The one-day summit, hosted by UN Secretary-General Ban Ki-moon, set goals to halt losses of tropical forests by 2030, improve food production and hike the share of electric vehicles in cities to 30% of new vehicle sales by 2030. In a speech at the closing ceremony of the summit yesterday, the Secretary-General called it a historic day. Never before have so many leaders gathered to commit to action on climate change. I thank every one of you who came to New York with ambition and commitment. 
The non-binding initiatives were set by various coalitions of governments, multinational companies, cities, financial groups, investors, environmental organisations and other groups. And your life. Early today, French hostage Herve Rodel has been kill was killed by IS-linked fighters in Algeria. Now, staying with me to discuss these issues, Dr Khaled Fikri and Chris Doyle. Chris, can I come to you first? Now, this latest killing of the French hostage in Algeria came just has come just a few days after the letter that was um, posted by Adnani um, in Iraq and Syria, calling for different countries to kidnap, to kill different people. Are we going to be seeing more of this? I fear we may well do, because we certainly know that ISIS has uh, various uh, people uh, who, are, who have been kidnapped, and they obviously have a record of having do, uh, done it in the past. And that is because it has worked for them. It has achieved massive publicity across the globe, but it has made this movement a household name. And given the fact that we have now seen uh, quite significant uh, US-led strikes in Syria, uh, I think we're all fearing what the riposte from ISIS is going to be. I think that uh, the very, very awful uh, beheading of this French tourist in Algeria is just the beginning of uh, further atrocities. All of it points to a very, very uh, dangerous picture in the region at the moment. And uh, I'm not sure where this all ends and exactly what the strategy is going forward in terms of these strikes in Syria. Because whereas there is some sort of strategy in Iraq, where there is changes in the government in uh, Baghdad in order to try to include more Kurds, more Sunni Arabs, there is no apparent political strategy to resolve the Syria crisis. So U.S. forces have now engaged inside Syria, but without any political program that somehow can actually achieve a positive end outcome. Dr Khalid, can I bring you in here? Uh, we've just seen another killing of another hostage, this time in Algeria, but this group obviously say they are affiliated with yes. Islamic State. It's a very worrying time. Yes, uh, I agree with you, really. The, the matter is, um, if you give me just one minute to clarify the point here Islamically, from the Islamic point of view, it is completely prohibited and haram to kill uh, civilians or to kill people who are not engaged in the fight in fighting in the fighting air lands so that uh, we have a covenant any muslims living in britain or any muslims in a western country there is a strong covenant with the people whom we are living with even if they are not muslims yes and the majority are not muslims but we are living with a covenant and this covenant gives the aman in, in islam and it is completely haram prohibited to betray the people whom you are living with so kidnapping people and killing them or following such an extreme ideology which has no relation to islam at all and this is very clear through the quran and the sunnah i think yani, all the muslim the mainstream of muslimin here they know exactly that this is prohibited completely to be engaged with such issues and killing others, civilians who are innocent. And we are far away from the battlefield, which is either in Sham or Iraq or in wherever it is. But can I, can I just bring in, I mean, the letter that I mentioned earlier, um, written by Adnani, yes. um, the spokesperson for IS, I mean, he's saying, you know, kill these people wherever uh -huh. you find them. And he even said the filthy French. I mean, I think he was referring to these these individuals who may have governments or countries supporting these wars or are part playing a role within these airstrikes? Really, in Islam, we don't take uh, any person with the uh, sins or the bad doings of his government or his ruler. Uh, the other point is we are addressing the governments. We are saying, I wish that the British government would not be involved in such a coalition. America has its own agenda. And we all think that there is a hidden agenda regarding the, this uh, strikes against the ISIS. It is not against ISIS. What happened within the last few days is that killing innocent civilians as well as other Muslims groups, many of them were killed without anything. So it is not ISIS. It is an American agenda with its uh, people who are uh, allies to it to destroy whatever regarding the Islamic movement, radical Islamic groups or jihadists, whatever it is. And this will provoke some of the Muslims to do a revenge. And again, I am saying that this is haram to, to, to kill innocent people, to attack people who are civilians in such countries. And I wish that the British government will give us more and more freedom to talk and to address this, because Islam is very clear. 
when you want to fight, you have to, to be very clear, to announce the flag of fighting and to go to the, the area. And we, you cannot fight by stab backing people uh, uh, on their backs. Okay, Chris, can I bring you in here? Now, the French have said that they will not be intimidated and they will continue upon their line um, in supporting the U.S. Uh, on their mission to combat Islamic State. Um, will, this sort of, will this provoke further action from IS? I, I imagine that if the French continue with their strikes that uh, IS will uh, consider what is uh, possible for them to carry out. I, I think that uh, they quite clearly want to send a message to the French, French public that this is the cost of the operations in Iraq uh, as it stands. But coming back on what Dr. Khaled said, I mean, he is absolutely right that it is haram in Islam uh, to kill people in such fashion. I entirely agree with that. But, you know, I think we have to be very, very clear that it's not just these beheadings that uh, IS have committed. I mean, it's been burying people alive. It's been crucifying people. It has been taking uh, attacks to uh, many, many communities uh, within Iraq and Syria who are innocent. Now, he is right to ask questions about what the American agenda is. But I was a little confused when he sort of he said that there is an American uh, agenda in going up these uh, uh, jihadis within Syria. Well, that's how Islamic State, ISIS, whatever we wish to call it, describes itself. Um, I would love to know what the American agenda really was, because at the moment, I'm not really quite sure that the Americans know what their policy and strategy in, in Syria is. I think that there is uh, an element of huge public pressure pushing them towards taking action. This is a reluctant uh, president uh, in terms of, uh, you know, going to war in Syria. He's shown that quite clearly, really. And, you know, what is their end, uh, end game here? Because uh, it's very difficult to see how this is going to be achieved by bombing from the air. Chris, can I just um, ask you as a final uh, question before we do round up this segment? Um, now, I think what Sheikh Khalid was saying was that it's not just IS targets that are being hit. Uh, we've heard this from aid workers who are there. We've heard this from other groups. Um, of this does include Jabhat al-Nusra, obviously the al-Qaeda-affiliated group. But what was initially said, that IS would be targeted. Now, if, if this isn't just the one group being targeted, what's next? And are we now supporting um, the Assad regime? I don't think that necessarily follows. The Americans claim, and uh, it, it is their claim, that the particular group that was targeted was actually uh, devising imminent plots against the United States and looking at some of the people involved. Uh, there is a possibility that that is the case. But it would not make uh, sense if the United States was also attacking the various other opposition groups that actually at the same time it is also authorizing money through Congress to buy weapons for. So I think, yet again, I think we need to know more information about all of this and not perhaps jump to too many conclusions. Um, I don't believe that given that they've spent three years saying that Assad should go, that they have suddenly jumped in bed with the regime. But that is definitely something that we need to guard against because the Syrian regime was the cause of this crisis. It's not the solution. Well, on that note, um, we are going to have to round up this segment. Um, so we're going to go in our first break. I'd like to thank my guests on this half. But um, join us after the break. We'll be looking at some of our news on Twitter and a home story um, looking at Cage and an event they held last week.